you for joining us at the roundtable. Brought to you by Community Education Arts, a nonprofit organization based in Noblesville, Indiana. I'm Alice Cavanis Gober, president of CE Arts. And I'm Sarah E. Morin, secretary of CE Arts. Let's sit down at the roundtable. Welcome, everybody, to a special workshop edition of At the Round Table. Um, we are CEA Arts, and uh, we have a special lineup for you talking about Sula. Sula is a 1979 novel by Toni Morrison. This is part of our NICE selection. NICE stands for Noblesville Interdisciplinary Creativity Expo, and we're in year number seven. Yes, Alice? Yes, we are in year number seven. And <laughs> I, I just have to say, I think Sula was published in 73, but I could have a typo in my notes. So, oh, what did I say? Uh, 79. Oh, I am sorry. It is 73. That's okay. okay, 73. It is well, 73. Anyway. But yes, we are in our seventh year. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. Forgive us if we get dates wrong. <laughs> we're, we're seven years old. <laughs> and what we try to do with NICE is just reacquaint people with classic novels, maybe something you read in high school and maybe you have forgotten about it. Maybe you want to find something uh, to appreciate about it that you've never appreciated before. But also for people who have never read the novel or who maybe don't remember anything about the novel, we like to use just one passage of it as an entry point and really study that in detail. And then at the end, then we create all types of art inspired by either the book as a whole or that specific passage. But before I go any further with that, I want to let you know who is in the room with me. Um, so I am Sarah E. Morin. I am, you know, part of the, the, what do I want to say? I am one of the, the four mothers of <laughs> NICE. <laughs> But we also You're have midwife. <laughs> <laughs> You're a co-founder. You're a co-founder for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also have a uh, co-founder Alice Cavanis Gober. Say hi. Hi, Alice. Every hi everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we also have our, our most loyal, not only supporter, but a wonderful, uh, insightful contributor to this project, Deborah Peterson. Yay, Deborah! Hi, <laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome. All We're right. so excited about this second workshop. This is our second workshop, but it's the first one devoted to one of the books entirely. Each of our, the rest of our workshops for this year will be devoted to one of our four books. This one's devoted to Sula, and we're so excited to uh, have this workshop. And then the next three will be on the other three books that we chose for this year's project. So, woo, Sula, here we come. <laughs> now, remind me, you told me last week or last two weeks ago, Deborah, is this one that you have read? Yes, I have read this one. I, I've read uh, most of Toni Morrison's poetry. That's what brought me into her world. And um, so I've, I'm like, like revisiting um, Song of Solomon. Oh, yeah. And I, I remember reading parts of Beloved, but it must have been at a time where I was glueless. <laughs> so <laughs> I need to go back and, and revisit that. So I'm, I'm, I'm re reacquainting myself with Milkman and Guitar right now <laughs> and Song of Solomon. Mm -hmm. Very good. Toni Morrison is one of my favorite, favorite authors. She's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Alice, did you want to start off with some reasons why we love this novel? Yes, why we love it. Well, first of all, that list could go on for a very long time. So we broke it, we broke it down to a very short list. First of all, beautiful prose. And you, even calling some of the passages in this book prose is a little hard because they are so lyrical, so poetic. But Toni Morrison, if you're familiar with her writing, you, you know her prose is absolutely stunning. Um, we always try in our project to pick at least one or two authors from underrepresented groups and Toni Morrison is a author from two still underrepresented groups female and black so she uh, that's one of, the, uh, one of the reasons we also loved choosing this book out of the many that we looked at um, a lot of people know Toni Morrison's beloved 
uh, as Deborah mentioned, but not this one so much. And we just love this book and feel like it, it should be featured as much as some of her more popular books. And it has such great character study in it. And I should probably pluralize that and say characters or character studies because they're just the characters come alive on the page and live in your brain and your soul for such a long time after you read this book. And probably the most uh, impactful reason for us when we were uh, going through our shortlisted books and then getting down to our final four for picking this book was that it features a relationship between two females. Um, this friendship, it's such a unique story in that regard. Um, we just don't get a lot of female friendship focused books uh, in, in, that come across our, our huge lists of books that we want to look at for this project every year. This is one of the few. So um, those were the things that we really, really struck us that we just loved about it so much. Yeah. Absolutely. Did yeah. you want to add anything that you loved about the book, Deborah? Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know where to begin. Because, I know that's, a, that's such you know, a hard it, it, It's when, you know, when you're reading Toni Morrison, um, and especially this book with all this, with all the factors that you just listed, Alice, I mean, it just, it, it's just like a, a, a pean of, mm -hmm. of immersion. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it. Other than, you know, when, when you're reading this book and, you know, looking at that, you know, seeing how that relationship between the two grow as they grow, um, it's like it, it, it gets in your hair. Yeah. It gets, you know, it's in the sweat behind your knees. It mm -hmm. just is so, um, I don't know how to describe it, but Toni Morrison has this way, especially in this story, to pull you in so that the whole rest of the universe just melts away. Yeah. There, there's just nothing be, but you and them. And, mm -hmm. you know, all, and I know that there's a lot of categorizations and topics and this is and that's and everything. But when you're, when you're in this book, you, none of that matters because right. you're in this book and you are doing the same verbs that they are doing. And it's just, you know, it just is just so full of life. Mm -hmm. um, even I think, in, in the, just the slow moments. Do you feel, I feel like, I wanted to ask you, uh, mm -hmm. do you feel like that partly that's due to the fact that she writes such incredible characters with such incredible writing? I mean, her, her characters oh, are, yeah, her characters definitely. are great, but the way that she, she can writes pull off them, a, a three page detail. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's the whole thing. And, yeah. and you, you know it, you, but you every, are even there, you the, have even it the, in every one of your senses. Yeah. It, and I, I feel like even the more yeah. minor characters are fully fleshed out and yeah. really get in your soul too. And, and, and I feel like um, some of what you talked about uh, leads us to, you know, a little bit of the, the tougher stuff about this book for us when we, especially when we were picking it, we had to think about, you know, we always try to think of the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to the books that we're choosing. Cause you know, a lot of these books are from, older time periods and there's going to be some tough stuff in them and this book i have we should put a, a warning out right away it has you know sexual passages are are in it it is definitely for adults due to the sexual themes that uh run through the book which again beautifully written amazing prose we'll talk about that but more but uh, uh, that is something to be aware of and and then we always have to be aware that um, as the hosts of NICE, Sarah E. and I are both two white women living in the Midwest, and our guest tonight, Deborah, is also white. So we are, you know, discussing and critiquing, if you will, not in a bad way, in a good way, talking about a black author, a book with black characters, racism is going to come up um, in the book, and 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 uh, the premise of the entire story is kind of based on race, racial history and everything. And so um, I feel like we have to say those things right at the right at the front, you know, and say we we are aware of those, and we try very hard to to um, look at uh, books like Sula and um, other books that have uh, some 
difficult subject matter for some people, we try to be respectful and, and handle those as best we can. And sexual themes as well. I mean, it's not easy for, yeah, I'm 58 years old. It's not, you know, I'm like, oh, oh, I don't know what to talk about this out loud. But, you know, at least Toni Morrison has a way of writing about sexual, you know, themes and things in a way that you're just like, oh, I really do want to talk about that because that's so beautifully written, you know. <laughs> so anyway, that's probably enough of the tough stuff for now. We'll probably get more into some of those goods and bads and uglies when we get further on in our workshop tonight. Next up, we continue our discussion of Sula by Toni Morrison. This has been At the Roundtable with Alice and Sarah E. of Community Education Arts. Our nonprofit organization is based in Noblesville, Indiana. You can find us online at cearts.org. We'd like to thank James Weston for writing our intro music and for his technical savvy. Join us next time at, at the Roundtable. Table.